Hello, I'm Bob Lancer, and the purpose of this show is to lead you into the life you truly want to be living. It is also about helping you to better understand and relate with others, especially the children in your life, in support of their great potential. So this show is for anyone who wants to live with more peace and purpose and positive power to soar into the fulfillment of our greatest promise. Avoid the common mistake of trying to bring order to a child's behavior by reacting with emotional chaos. When you react with emotional chaos, you're sending a force field out into your environment that generates chaos. Your children will not be able to behave any better until they calm down. But your child cannot calm down and behave in an orderly manner as long as you are reacting in an emotionally chaotic manner. Before you can think straight, come up with real solutions, recognize what really has to happen. You need to be calm. In a calm state, you have a clear mind. You can recognize what's really going on. But when you're emotionally chaotic, you're also going to be mentally confused You might think you know the answer, the solution, the key to your child's problems, but you won't know it because you'll be so confused due to your emotional chaos that you're in a way mentally blind. As you calm down and bring order and harmony into the way that you feel, you'll find first of all that you're feeling great, that your child's behavior does not have the power to make you react in painful ways unless you give that child that power. And you'll find that solutions just sort of come to you naturally as you observe the situation. From an ordered state, you can create order in your surroundings and find ways to influence your child to behave in an orderly way. At the same time, you will be modeling for your child the orderly emotional state necessary for your child to demonstrate thoughtful, responsible, orderly behavior. The quality of your parenting impacts the quality of your child's behavior, and the quality of your parenting is impacted by your attitude toward life. Feeling oppressed or depressed by circumstances compromises one's ability to relate in loving, effective ways with children. Feeling enthusiastic, secure, and inspired catapults one's power and skills in all areas and in every relationship, while feeling disappointed, discouraged, or defeated drains one of power and ability. Your child needs you to connect with her and to respond to her with just the right expression of emotion to feel the sense of connection and understanding she needs to feel in her relationship with you in order to behave well. When a parent relates with his child in a morose, lackluster, emotionally disengaged manner, the child feels rejected, dejected, ignored, overlooked, and alienated. And that causes the child's behavior to decline. The emotional condition emanating from the parent is absorbed by the child, and then the child demonstrates a similar emotional condition. Just as the performance of the adult in low spirits declines, the performance of the child in low spirits declines, and this is one of the causes of child behavior problems, including poor school performance. For the sake of our children, if not for ourselves, We need to be emotionally free. Emotional freedom means that you are not caught up in any emotion at all. You are internally free to select the emotional response that best suits the needs of the circumstances. When you have emotional freedom, your circumstances do not run your emotions, but rather you can harness the power of your emotion to help you to direct your circumstances. Your emotional reaction to circumstances, including to your child's behavior, is fundamentally a choice. But if you're not self-aware enough, it seems that you have no choice but to emotionally react as you're programmed to do. 
To gain emotional freedom, ask yourself, what emotional state, mood, or attitude would be best for me to have right now? This question helps you to disidentify with your pre-programmed emotional reaction pattern to release it and to awaken to a positive choice. When you harness the power of your emotions to be the very best parent you can be for your child, your emotions help you to help your child. But when your negative or chaotic emotional reactions run you, they inhibit your ability to come up with the best responses to your child's behavior. Intense emotional reactions, even mildly nervous states of frustration, anxiety, or depression, inhibit our ability not only to respond with the proper emotion, but to even understand what is actually needed from us. The more emotional one is, the more unclear and even delusional the thinking of that person. For instance, while a parent feels resentful of his child for leaving his room a mess, the parent does not realize that he's actually not angry at his child. His anger is a response to how he is thinking of his child. Under the influence of an emotion, our confused thinking has us believing that some other person or circumstance is the cause of our emotional reaction. But our emotional reactions are our responses. They are how we are dealing with that other person or circumstance. Under the influence of mental confusion caused by emotionalism, an individual cannot even recognize the truth of this and will continue justifying and defending his negative emotional reactions. You have to calm down to clearly see that you are the cause of your emotional states, to see how you cause them, and to choose a wise emotional response. If you are feeling down, you bring your child's happy spirit down. When children or adults feel unhappy, their ability to think creatively, to understand, to problem solve is hindered. You want your child to feel motivated to pursue the very best in life. To feel that way, your child needs to be exposed to motivated people. We need to live in the joy of inspiration, whatever our circumstances. Because not only in the joy of inspiration are we already fulfilled, but in an inspired state, we have access to our highest capacity of problem solving. In an inspired state, you can play with your children, joyfully interact with them, relate in pleasant and positive ways with them, all of which is essential for the child to be able to behave well. An inspired state, you can also recognize when it's time to stop the play, when the child needs to settle down in order to not lose his ability to focus and behave responsibly. You make the best choices when you're emotionally balanced. If you make your inspiration dependent upon your circumstances, you must respond with a defeated attitude when things don't turn out the way you want them to. But in inspiration... Life is already working for you, and you're empowered to do your best work to create what you want in life. You need to feel inspired to enjoy all the great gifts your life presently offers you, like the presence of your children, to feel as wonderful as you want to feel, and to make the best decisions. You need to be free of emotional states of stress and strain and worry. As you live in inspiration around your children, they naturally feel inspired and benefit from all the good that inspiration does the inspired person. Whatever your circumstances, you are now free to live in the fulfillment of inspiration. It's a choice. How is inspiration a choice? Recognize how you're feeling right now, and you'll see that you have the power, the ability, the freedom to let go of states of stress and strain that make your spirit feel oppressed. You can relax by just trusting that life is working out perfectly, beautifully, without you needing to fretfully control. Living in inspiration is not a luxury. It's not something that you have to put off until you make enough money. It's a necessity for the life you want to live. 
and it is available to you right now if you'll just allow yourself to relax into it, to open up to it, and to trust in its power. When you're filled with inspiration, you do better at parenting. As you practice living in a little bit more inspiration every day, you'll find that you can experience a little more of it and experience it a little more consistently. With persistent daily exercise, your inner emotional freedom to experience more and more inspiration unconditionally will grow. And as that happens, your children will grow more inspired, more fulfilled, more loving, and more successful. Directing child behavior is an art that is rooted in science. The art side of child discipline has to do with its creative nature. How you relate with your child literally creates the person your child turns into. The science side of child discipline is based on the centuries of observing, analyzing, and testing that has gone into the development of our knowledge about child behavior, development, and education. To guide child behavior most effectively is to combine these two sides of the process, guided by what we can call present awareness. To practice present awareness means that you observe your interaction with the child in the present moment as your primary guide in directing the child's behavior. Your awareness of the child in the present moment empowers you to connect the science of child behavior management with the art of it as it applies to this specific child at this specific time. To apply the art side of child behavior management involves your vision of the results you want, the conditions you want to create. To lead the child into the fulfillment of her higher potential, the guiding force is awareness, backed by science and rooted in love. Love is as essential as any other factor when it comes to guiding child behavior because love is the force that lets you see or sense what is truly in the best interest of the child. Love is about service, not in a subservient sense, but in the best sense. Love is always connected with present awareness because if you're not basing your responses to the child on the present context, you are demonstrating love for your idea of the child, but not for whom the child truly is right now. The child who feels loved feels inspired to love back to relate in a sensitive and caring way with the person who embraces that child in his or her heart. To access the power of science, research the child development, child discipline, and child education literature that interests and inspires you the most. Science, however, is no substitute for present awareness. Depending on science without present awareness is like driving your car with all of your attention focused on the map and off the road. To access the power of love, you need to be basically centered in a state of peace, poise, and present awareness. To the degree that you feel nervous, impatient, frustrated, or anxious, you block your ability to register the guidance of love that flows from the wisdom of your heart. Child discipline without love sets up a contentious relationship between the adult and the child. The adult is focusing too much on control and not enough on connection. This incites more resistance from the child and turns into a battle of wills. The more challenging the child's behavior, the more difficult it may be to remain tethered to love because the child's behavior threatens your desire to feel in control. One of the most demanding and important tasks for successful child behavior management is remembering to trust love rather than fear. Whatever your child's behavior problem is, Turn that problem into a goal. Work on envisioning your child free of that behavior pattern. Let's say you have a little tyrant at home, a child who's making irrational demands, demands to be in control, and will scream and become destructive even, even hit you if you don't give in to his command. Of course, this is not something that you want. But this is not something you can change effectively in a state of anger and fear. You have to remain non-reactive to your child's challenging behavior. That means you have to have emotional freedom. You have to basically remain 
at peace, in a state of emotional poise as you observe the child and confidently expect that you will come up with the understanding you need to solve the problem. Now, the more you yell at the child, the more annoyance you express, the more you criticize and complain, the worse the child's behavior is likely to be. That way of reacting to a child gives the child a self-image that defines the child as a misbehaving child. And that self-image will actually drive the child to behave in ways that are consistent with it. If you react with anger and annoyance on a consistent basis to a child, you are teaching that child to believe that who he is is someone who misbehaves. And he will accept that role and live from it. So we have to be very careful about how much criticalness we express toward the child's behavior, particularly children under the age of six when their self-image is forming at such a deep level. Your goal for child behavior should not be the child submitting to your will, because then your goal, if you happen to achieve it, will be very depressing and demoralizing for the child. That's about breaking the child's will, the child's spirit, which means you'll have an unmotivated child who basically drifts through life. The goal is to have the child behaving beautifully without you having to direct. Now, to achieve important goals, we have to be willing to remain committed to that goal for the long term. You may try something and find things get even worse. But if you remain aware and use every effort as an experiment, then learn from the results to see what's working and what's not working. And if you continue to work on preserving your peace and poise unconditionally, however the child is behaving, and continue to remain confident that you can achieve the goal of having your child behave in a wonderful, loving, respectful, happy, healthy way, you'll find that over time you achieve that goal. Now, one of the things that's very, very important, though, is what you imagine as your future. Because the future you imagine is the future you're actually bringing about. So be very careful about how you imagine your child. If you imagine your child getting worse, if you imagine your best efforts failing, if you tell yourself that nothing will work, all of that represents negative programming that would undermine your ability to achieve any goal in life. Be very alert to recognize what you might be doing to contribute to the problem. For instance, if you have a child who's expressing a lot of belligerence, it's very likely that at least one of the parents is expressing a lot of belligerence. If dad is being disrespectful or rude toward mom, junior is going to adopt the same pattern. If mom is being argumentative, defensive, unreachable in communication, you're going to find junior demonstrating similar qualities. So be on the lookout to see how your behavior is actually contributing to the problem that you're having with the child so that you can change your behavior. Before you can start accomplishing your goal, you have to stop doing whatever you're doing to keep that goal from being accomplished. As you improve the influences surrounding your child, stay committed to your objective. Keep your mind free of visions of failure. Envision success. Trust that you will be successful. Maintain your emotional composure when you're not getting your way. Pay attention to what happens between your child to learn from every experience to see how what you are doing is actually working for or against your objective. You will find yourself being more and more successful in your relationship with your child. We teach children to ignore our directions and corrections when we issue those incorrectly. For instance, if you direct your child to do something that he is almost surely incapable of doing, even though you think he ought to be able to do it, you are actually teaching your child to tune you out and to ignore your directions. 
Because every time he does not listen, he's developing the habit of not listening. So if you're telling him to do something that he can't do, you're developing in him the habit of not doing even what he can do when you tell him to do it. How can you tell if your child is capable of following a direction? Based on observation, with a little bit of calm thoughtfulness. Here's an example. Melissa bought her eight-year-old a new bicycle, the first one he ever had with gears. As soon as he climbed onto the bike, with a look of ecstatic glee on his face, she warned, be careful how you use those gears because you can easily strip them. Of course, her eight-year-old was so filled with exuberance over his new bike that there was no room in his brain to even register her direction. He got on his bike and he zoomed down the road and he used those gears however his impulses directed him. Melissa's response to this was to repeat her instructions when he returned to her, his face beaming. But again, he ignored her. Now this time, Melissa began to feel frustrated and disrespected. She angrily yelled at him in the street to be careful with how he manipulated the gears. She was turning this beautiful new bicycle experience into a fight. Yet once again, his joy overruled her words. He did not mean to be disrespectful, but his mother was demanding a level of self-control that was simply beyond the ability of an eight-year-old boy filled with excitement to respectfully follow. We need to understand the impact of a child's emotional state on his ability to register instructions and directions and to respond to them. Melissa expected that her son should be able to treat the gears carefully because that's something that she would be able to do. But her expectations blinded her to the reality of her son, who he is, what his emotional nature is, and also to how the way she was relating to him was having a negative impact on the development of his behavior. By repeating her failing tactic, Melissa not only wasted her energy and caused herself to feel humiliated, she was actually training her child to ignore her words. And that's all the time we have for today's broadcast of Bob Lancer's Answers. To order a recording of today's show or of previous shows, and for more information about my work, check out my website at boblancer.com. That's B-O-B-L-A-N-C-E-R.com. Until we meet again, may your life be blessed with peace and love and the light of wise solutions that really work.